I'm going to be giving you a complete beginner's guide to Okta. If you find this video useful, be sure to like and subscribe, and let's get right into it. First of all, what you need to do is go to their website, which is okta.com. And once you're there, you'll be able to get yourself a free trial. To do that, click on this button here that says free trial. It's going to take you to this sign up page where you just have to sign up. Go ahead, put your details in, and I'll show you the next steps. Okay, and here we are now inside the onboarding. First of all, it's going to ask you what apps are most important for you to integrate. So select the ones that you obviously want to use. I'm going to go ahead and select Slack. I'm going to pick Zoom, uh, Office, and let's also say uh, Pager Duty here. Now we can go ahead and press Next. Where are your users imported from? So um, pick which one. Uh, you can pick any of these, or you can pick CSV or XLS file. I'm going to go ahead and just say uh, this one. And then what features are you most interested in? Single sign-on, automations and workflows, multi-factor authentication, uh, all, all these other ones. I'm just going to go ahead and put this one here. And then what do you want to solve with them? You can just give them a little bit of information there. Or you can press skip. So here we are, now we are inside of the sort of get started bit. This is the initial onboarding. You want to go ahead first of all and add some users here. So you can go ahead and you can import. You can import from an active directory. So that's sort of one of the um, softwares that we just spoke about. Um, and you can connect through there. Alternatively, you can do it through a file like I showed you earlier. So we can go from CSV. And for this, we can just go ahead and we can import via CSV. So that's sort of the first step is to add your users. Now we can add an app to use single sign-on. So we can add an app here and we just pick an app that we want to use it for. So let's say we want to go ahead and use um, Slack potentially. We go ahead and pick this one here. We can add this integration for the single sign-on. It's going to give us some general settings. You want to put the application name, uh, the domain. So um, if you want to log in like this, you can just put that, for example. So we can just do that. Um, and it will be that.slack.com. Uh, you can put icons if you want to. And then we can press next. So now it's going to ask you for the sign on methods. Um, you're going to pick which one you want to do, um, which one your product uses, essentially. But go and fill all of these out as accurately as you can. Press done. Uh, make sure you've put it in all accurately as I said now once we've done that what we can go ahead and do is go back to this uh, Guide here and we can go ahead and add a another admin so press admin and you're going to basically give them um, Privileges so you just want to put in their email uh, stuff like that and you're gonna be able to go ahead and add them as an admin on Your account so they can also manage the same things you can go ahead and manage So now the next thing we've done the uh, authenticators uh, we can go ahead and select those if we want to. So you can just add any of these authenticators that you might want to use. For example, Google Authenticator, you can add this. Um, and this can then help you to log in one click on certain things because you're going to have it all built in, I guess you could say. Um, and then if we go back, we're going to see one more thing. We've got this uh, MFA here. You can go ahead and you can configure how this all works, essentially. Uh, so you can add a policy in here policy name description and what groups you go ahead and assign it to so that's basically the get started bit now if we go over here to the dashboard here we're gonna see um, some basic information overview status tasks um, things like that really and you can go into any of these so uh, let's say you want to go into this you can press view and then you can um, view the tasks and it's gonna give you the options to go ahead and do these things there for example and if you go to the drop down here on dashboard, you've got your tasks, you've got agents, notifications, so you can send messages, and then we have our get started that we've just looked at. Now next up here we have our directory. So this is where we can add people, so we can have people in there. But we can also do things like adding groups, so we can uh, create a group, and we can say something like admins or something like that. We can add a description, we can save it, and then we can go ahead and we can add people to that group. We can add rules to the groups. Um, if we sort of click into here, we can add people, applications, profile, directories, and the admin roles that they have. So you can set up the group permissions in here. We've also got devices, so we can um, see what device they're logging on and that kind of thing, or we can block them. Uh, profile editor, so we can uh, create 
our user types here and we can also change the mappings of existing users here like this uh, we've got our directory integrations and then we have our profile sources here so where they're coming from now under customizations we have our brands so obviously we've got this original brand we've got here uh, we can go into here and we can change some stuff about it so we can change the theme we can change the logo the colors favicon you know pages um, we can select the sign-in pages so if we want to configure this one here we can do this and make our sign-in page look like this um, we've also got our email stuff here so we can set up stuff like activation emails we can customize them just by clicking into it um, and then we can go in here change our sort of integrations like that just to customize it and you're going to be able to go into the code here and change it on the code but it's relatively easy to go ahead and do if you know sort of some basics your domains here so the domains you're going to be sending from um, you can add domains by default it's going to be the octa.com one and then also you have your settings here so uh, display languages all that kind of stuff as I said under here we've got our email providers so we can add in if we've got a, a third party domain or something we can go ahead and add that in here we've got our SMS so we can do SMS sign-ons or two-factor um, there and we can go ahead and add that in and then we have the uh, end user dashboard layout so we can look at all the different layouts for example on slack we can take a look at what it's going to go ahead and be like and then we've got other here which is just some other sort of settings application integrations we've kind of already looked at this, this is the apps you've got integrated you can go ahead and uh, create app integrations um, select the type the way that you log into it so you'll be able to figure that out by you can look it up or sometimes they'll tell you and then basically you just can connect it up so that you can sign in directly with these details you also got self-service so this is anything um, like support that you know self support that kind of stuff and you've got your API integrations as well um, and they have like some base connections you can do here I believe they probably have some other manual ones as well which you can authorize so here we've got our security and there's a lot of different settings in security you can do stuff like captures if you want um, you've got you can see here to see you know how secure your systems are you can see here that we've got some critical uh, security impacts here we've got authenticators so we can change all that but essentially all of these ones are here are going to be different things to do with the security of your system as a whole and then we have our workflows here so our automations we can set up some automations let's just say test and we can select some uh, conditions and some actions here so you know you can just change some things inside of here essentially um, and you can change the conditions as well when you run it the groups it applies to all that kind of stuff there's some more stuff in here like you know inline hooks um, you know you can connect all of these stuff up key management so you can put your web keys web tokens in here and then we have our reports here which is just general reports that you can look overall so you've got your health of your passwords of your application uh, general troubleshooting access all that kind of stuff and then lastly we have our account stuff in here uh, in just under settings which we can also kind of see what we need if we go up here as well we can type in what we need and then they're going to send us they're going to reach out to us and basically tell us what plan we should go ahead and use up here we can go to my end user dashboard so this is essentially the dashboard that you've created this is basically the final thing you've got here you can go ahead and select it and you can basically see what your dashboard is looking like really but it's really as simple as that to go ahead and start using if you found this video useful be sure to go down below and like and subscribe um, and comment down below if you have any other videos you'd like me to make thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one